Hello everyone, it's uh, Alias from the Hack5 forums here, and this is a video on setting up a um, Pelican HPC or high performance cluster. So basically, the first things you're going to need is a reasonably fast network. This is a, this here is only uh, 100 megabits, um, but if you are going to be doing some serious high performance cluster work, you're going to need at least a gigabit. Um, so and for each of your computers, so this here is going to be the front end node. Um, this is where Pelican HPC is actually going to run from, and then these two computers here which are really slow, but these are the only ones I had available. Um, these are just going to run as slaves. And so you don't even need CDs for these because they both boot over the network. Um, you just have to have them plugged into the Ethernet here. So all I've got here is this, this is a um, uh, this is just compact office la uh, office desktop. So it does have Pixie, Pixie boot installed and, and it can boot over the network and things like that. Um, so here's the Ethernet cable just there and it runs all the way into the router here. Um, and this here is just, this is actually my media center uh, that I've cannibalized. And so there you've got the Ethernet cable there and that just runs straight into the uh, Ethernet, uh, sorry, the router right here. And here's my laptop that just is going to end as the um, front end server. So let's get started. What, I've, what you've first got to do um, is go to the Pelican HPC website, which I don't know off the top of my head. Um, but just Google it and you know you can download a distro from there. Their bandwidth is not the greatest, so you might have to wait a while longer. But you download Pelican HPC, this is version 2.2, um, which comes with MPI for Python, so basically Python bindings for the MPI framework, well not actually framework, but the uh, MPI, which stands for Message Passing Interface, I believe, um, which just passes the information between all the nodes and things like that. So burn that to an ISO, sorry, burn that to a CD, and then boot to it from your front end node, as I'm about to do now. Now, this will take a few minutes. Now, whoa, that boots. Number one, the thing you've got to do first before you can even start using a router, this isn't even hooked up to the net, um, you've got to isolate your network that you're using from your normal house network. Um, at the moment here, this is actually my proper router that I use for you know, access to the internet and things like this, but I've taken it off the net for now just to use it for this purpose, because it's, you know, red light. Um, you've, oh, hang on, there we go. So this is, if you can see that, this is what shows up first, yada, yada, yada. You just want to choose the first op option, which is basically live mode. Um, it won't ca it won't use your hard disk or anything like that. It will boot up in, you know, just boot, copy to RAM and boot from there, you know. Um, there we go, while that happens. Uh, yes, now, you've got to disable the DHCP server on your router. Um, because Pelican HPC runs a DHCP server, you don't want the two of them, you know, conflicting with each other. So what I suggest is back up your configuration on your router, save it to, you know, your desktop or something like that, and then start making changes. Um, on this one, it was just as simple as untick a box that says enable DH DHCP server. Um, and that was basically it, you know, and, you know, that's it. Um, yes, now, it's booting. Also, when this was booting um, for me, it decided to try and get a DHCP address, which, you know, sorry, it tried to pull a DHCP server to try and get an IP, and it just obviously wasn't because there's no DHCP server around. Um, so when that pops up in a second, let's just see if I can. So there, it's configuring X. Yada yada yada. So here we go, see now it's trying to, see right there, DHCP discover, well it's not going to find anything, so just press control C and it will skip that completely and continue with the boot process. Now what you can do, it'll, it'll pop up in a, say, in a second saying where you want to extract the information, like the um, examples and things like that. Um, we're just going to choose RAM. You can choose a hard drive, but obviously, you know, if you're not installing it, um, you don't want us to take over your operating system that's already on there. Um, you can put it to your, you can install it to a USB, um, but you have to read the documentation on that uh, if you want to do that. And here we go. So this is just asking us where we want to do it. So we want it in RAM one. So we just press Enter because you know we want it there. That's it. Now copy home user configuration. Yes, just tick yes for that. There we go, and now it's just extracting the examples and the MPI for Python. There we go, that's it. So now you just set a password. This will choose a simple one. 
like password, like that, and go OK. There we go, that's it. And now ask for a, a login. So the username is user, and then the password is what you just set a moment ago. So for me, that is password. And there we go, we're logged in. So now let's start the X server with the basic start X. And now that will boot an X server. Wee, we have a mouse. Okay, now the other thing I should mention is if you're... Ooh, there's Debian booting, by the way. This is based on Debian. Um, now, if your computers don't actually support booting over a network, what you can do is go to rom-o-matic.net and you can actually download... It's an ISO image that is based on Linux. You boot it up and then it will boot off... Um, then it will boot off the Ethernet itself. So if you don't have included drivers in your BIOS, that, that's a good way to you know, make sure that you can boot off an Ethernet. Um, thing. I had I tried that before, but in, in the end, I just switched computers instead. It made it a whole lot easier. Um, so I've only got two here. There we go. So now it's booted into a nice graphical desktop. So now let's choose the terminal, which is right... Oh, going up the terminal, which is right down the bottom here. Right there. Alright, here we go. So now to actually start... or just try getting it set up, you want to do pelican underscore setup. If you choose tab, it'll auto-complete. So Pelican underscore setup. It'll begin to do its thing. Now we want to choose the, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, NIC that we want to use. Obviously, we're hooked in with Ethernet. I don't suggest you use this over wireless, if you could. Um, so we're just going to choose SO, and that will start. Now here, it, it is, um, well, yeah, starting up the Ethernet card and things like that. Find the MAC address. There we go. So now it's just warning us that, you know, about the DHCP server, that, you know, if you do have another one on the network, it'll start conflicting. So we've obviously already disabled ours, so we can just tick yes. And we'll start doing some stuff. There we go. And so now it's time to bring the nodes into the cluster. So this will cut any already running MPI jobs. We're not running any, so we just tick yes. There we go, so now it's trying to find them. Obviously, it's not going to find any. As you can see, there are zero compute nodes online. So now it's time to actually start booting them. So let's just, uh, uh, let's just turn that one on and that one on. And now it's just a race to see who boots first. So this one's already started booting off the... Um, uh, off of the Ethernet card, this one's just... <laughs> uh, there we go. And... Now this one's started booting as well. Ooh, this one's catching up. Oh, this one's in the lead. And hey, it won! Ha <laughs> ha! All right, and that's basically it. So, give it a close up here. I actually want to do it on the LCD. Um, so basically, yada yada yada, this is a Pelican HPC compute node, don't turn it off, yada yada. Don't log into these nodes, they're already running the back-end software that will, you know, enable you to do high-performance, you know, stuff. So now we come over here, and now we tick no. Not yes, no. And now the CD will spin up, and it will start pinging again. And now it says we have two compute nodes available. And so now, if we're not going to add any more, we just tick go yes, and that will run a benchmark. Or rather, yep, just press OK for that. Can't really press anything else. And I'm rapidly running out of time here. And there we go, that's it. So our nodes, so there's a quantity of three processors. 
um, and we have 1,045 megaflops, and then each node speed in megaflops there. And that's basically it. Then to shut this down, you basically just shut this front end node down, uh, and then just forcefully turn off the others, or you could log into them if you really want to. Um, actually, no, because you might not, no, because you won't have a password, but, yeah, and then you just uh, forcefully turn them off and things like that, and that's basically it. Now, there are, uh, the uh, tutorial is on the side here, um, just here, and that'll give you examples on what to actually do with it and things like that. What we can do is open up Octave, which will... Come on. It's one of these pains about a live environment it takes so damn long to do things. And run kernel under example. And it will do some processing. Stuff. Some regression models. And then make pretty pictures! Yay! And that's basically it. Um, so really easy to do. Just um, remember to disable the DHCP server. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. And see ya.